The Raven's Flock presents The Black Files An uncensored interview and review podcast for all geek fandom Welcome everybody, friends and pals, guys and gals, boys and girls around the world, pop a squad, pop open a cold with all of your boys and all of your friends. It is Wednesday night, a couple of hairs past 10 p.m., and you've been granted access to the uncensored and uncompromising interview and review podcast of the Raven's Flock. So whether you're a friend or you're a fiend, boy, girl, or in between, you are tuned in to a brand new episode of The Black Files. Yeah! Welcome, baby! Yes, indeed. As we're all trying to get through the month of January, this uh, much like the whiplash-inducing weather that we've been dealing with from uh, from well, Mother Nature, we uh, the whiplash-inducing news never stops. Damn right, here, and we're all going to need a lawyer and a massage therapist, and uh, of and I don't know, maybe Saul Goodman knows two very disreputable ones who can help us either way. I don't know. I He's a, not a real person. that. I need a witch doctor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you, like, Jose, listen, a witch doctor is not going to save you, you for, uh, 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 f- f- in, uh, in fact of how stiff you really are in real life. There's no saving that. I'm your host, Juan Arouse, folks, one of the heads of the Ravis Flock. Welcome to the Black Files, uh, the uncensored and uncompromising interview and review podcast of our uh, team. I'm the tech guru of the team. I'm the guy who always keeps a pair of Bluetooth earbuds in my person at all times, no matter what. Why? Because, let's face it, I'm finding reality to be a bit too shall i say overstimulating it's it's just too much i don't freaking want to deal with it i'd rather deal with either my pandora or my spotify playlist or my personal playlist of downloaded mp3s yeah that's right i still do the mp3s like uh, like we used to in the olden days and i don't just mean the olden days i mean the actual olden days i had a napster account that i paid money for i've got a limeware account that i haven't opened in over a decade i've got accounts towards disreputable on online sources that do not allow me to say what they are for fear of uh, actual financial retribution from several uh, uh, musical uh, uh, music labels. Uh, good, let's uh, let's just say. Jesus, uh, so the next thing you're going to tell us is that you still have your net zero account active. That silence is deafening and terrifying. And joining me tonight, folks, are the usual suspects of the team. Uh, looks like Zayanna Rose and Dragon Fan Cosplay can't join us tonight, but they'll be with us in spirit, and we love and appreciate them in any case. But first off, let me go ahead and say hello uh, to the man with a million opinions and zero apologies, the host of Los Amigos Play, which is live every Saturday afternoon at 5 p.m. Eastern on our channel right here. Folks, give it up for Mr. Angel Mendez! Hello, everyone! Beloved friends and listeners the world over. As usual, it is a pleasure and a joy to have you with me today. I am sincerely happy and grateful that you have taken the time to join us today. And I hope that, as usual, you will enjoy our show as much as we enjoy sitting here and being very angry about things that everybody should be angry about. So come get angry with us. Not so much angry, but righteously angry. Because, let's face facts, if we're going to be angry about something, let's be angry about stuff for the right reasons. Not just because we hate something on a personal level, but because we hate it on a level that this should not exist. Or, at the very least, this is a very bad thing that no one should have to suffer because it's dumb. It's very, very dumb. And let's not forget... The man who started it all, the uh, founder of the Ravis Flock, executive producer of our channel, the content manager, and the host of our flagship program, the Ravis Flock, live every Saturday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, and our and our wrestling uh, uh, recap show, Wrestle Rewind, live every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Folks, give it up for Mr. Jose Casa Kennedy! Kennedy! Dude, nobody's gonna know the Casabona. reference. What there. the hell was- ha. You like a freaking name gag? There's a name gag for you. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Ixi. You- Macho, I- at least when I do the name gags, at least I was cool about it. Yeah, no. You know why? Because it's annoying. You gotta stop. It's, it's, it's like, enough is enough. 
uh, with the with the name gag. It, like you're making it too long. If you're gonna have a name gag, make the name gag a little bit shorter, please. We got shows. To you get. heard the man. Lengthen it even further. No, I'm not kidding. Like we really like you want to get on the like we're all we're on the clock. We are always on the goddamn clock. I mean, help me the fuck Juan, out. Juan, 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 listen. Were you not having fun? No. Fun is not allowed. No, fun yes, is it. definitely allowed. I just wasn't having that much fun when the gag kept running too long. Like, you have... Okay, like, okay. Um, what's... Okay, no. You know what it is? This is ironic you know what this because is? you're spending you know a long time is? about... Do you what? know what this is? What? This is the Huntsman gag from Freakazoid. You don't huh. know... What the, you don't remember the Huntsman, do you? Vaguely. Oh, wow. I am freaking old. Unbelievable. Also, you're, you're, iron you're, you're ironically spending a lot of time on a joke that you said that it was taking too long. No, this isn't the joke anymore. The joke was uh, done already. I'm over here getting into like, wait a minute, I realize what it is. On Freakazoid, the, you remember how they would try to have <laughs> little mini cartoons of like other random ass characters that have nothing to do with Freakazoid at all or anything like that? Yes, one of them was the Huntsman. He was like, like this dashing, uh, like action adventure man and stuff. And he was, and his fucking thing was like very. <clears throat> the actual story was actually very, very super short, but the intro of like his jingle and everything was longer than the actual story. That yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I'm not saying that as a good thing. They did it right because it's a cartoon. We're not a cartoon. You remember that time in the Deadpool movie where Deadpool kind of died, but he just kept dragging it out to fuck with people? Yeah, I remember that. But that Wanto, was pretty fun. I remember we should that. Do that I want to, when I do it, I do it in good spirits. I do it in the spirit of fun. It's not a matter of spirit. It's just length. You can still do it. Just make it a little shorter. You're killing me I here. Will, okay, okay, fair enough. I will make it a little shorter. Folks, I am Jose Casabona, and I uh, thank you very much, Juancho, for uh, for introducing me with that uh, Mr. Kennedy joke. I do appreciate that, and I hope you guys are tuning in tonight because we're in for a tailspin of a topic. Yep, go and, ahead uh, and while, while get while the rest of our yep. uh, jazz going in, Jose. Absolutely. Much like all our other shows on his channel, we are simulcasting on both YouTube and Kick. Hit the subscribe or the follow button at the bottom right corner of your screen. Click the bell icon to enable all the notifications. Leave your questions and comments below and we'll answer as many as we can. And if you wish to go above and beyond to support the Raven's Flock, then you can become an inner flocker. For $4.99 a month, you'll have access to all the perks that comes with our membership. Juan, tell them. Well, for all the inner flockers we've got in our chat, and I know we have plenty, go ahead and show off those lovely membership badges and custom emojis, letting everybody know that you've stepped up and you're look, working hard to help save the Raven's flock from the clutches of late-stage capitalism. Those exact same clutches that regrettably have kept... Wow, well, god dang it. Our, the, look at this. You see what happened with the camera? Capitalism's trying to kill us with this because of freaking... <laughs> uh, because of freaking... The, 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 the practice of... of uh, uh, fucking, uh, fuck, I, I'm missing the name for it. God dang it. Uh, yeah, designed obsolescence. <laughs> there we go. They're des they designed the tech to break down on purpose. And they're doing that in order to milk us for every cent for it. They can make cam uh, uh, HDMI cables that last forever. They can make uh, uh, video capture cards that don't g uh, go out of date after five years. But they don't want Impossible. to. It's a freaking money-making machine, man. Wait a second, are you telling me that this company is providing hardware that is actually meant to last and remain effective? Insanity. No. That sounds like Mr. Burns' level of crazy. No, that's, that's actually exactly it. They're doing it exactly in the opposite. They can do it, but they don't want to because there's no money in that. If you make something that lasts forever, then you'll never go. Uh, then you'll go out of business after you're sold out. That's the freaking way they want it. And I'm not here for that. But here at the Raven's Flock, you're never going to run out of uh, of our uh, the, our uh, uh, unyielding search and hunt for the truth and hunt for justice in the world of nerd and pop culture. You get access to members first and members only content, a special discount to our merch store link in the description below. And you also get access to us, the Raven's Flock, your favorite Motley Crue nerds, here to make your voice our mission by providing us your thoughts, your input, your feedback, your ideas on how to better shape the future of this channel. And of course, let's not forget 
It, it, like considering that uh, I really had a lousy day, I was dragging ass. I was dragging ass so much. That ass was being dragged. No, I was dragging ass so much. My ass had dis- had become Benedict Cumberbatch and has, has taken over a mountain fortress and is keeping uh, uh, and it's keeping Martin Freeman from being able to find a glowy rock. They're having a very yeah. weird dialogue together, and I'm not comfortable with it. It's smog butt. All right. That's how dragon ass I am tonight. But thankfully, damn son. Thankfully, I've got the remedy for it, which is why we're th- uh, why I'm proud to say that the Ravens Flock is partnered up with Glitch Energy, and I'm going to be knocking back a little more Guava Warfare in order to keep myself from losing my shit. Um, Absolutely, folks. Gl- what- uh, Glitch Energy, zero calories, zero carbohydrates, zero sugars, and zero crash. Uh, I mean, I'm kicking back right now with uh, the Glitch Revive, which is a mixture of blackberry lemonade. And uh, Mr. Angel Mendez, I believe you have the same flavor yourself, don't you? That's right. I'll be using the Glitch Lemonade to keep myself going with that delicious blackberry and lemonade flavor. Fantastic hydration, especially considering how much talking we have to do through our regular jobs. So, as usual, we follow the philosophy of Mr. Shaquille O'Neal. If we don't like it, we don't buy it. If we don't buy it, we don't sell it to you. When we say that this is good, we mean that it is good, and we mean every word of it. Absolutely. And, and hey, listen, you don't have to take our words for it. If you, uh, if you go to glitchenergy.com, if you click on the product information of every, uh, of every product that they have, you can take a look at the nutritional facts yourself, and you can see what ingredients they put into these yeah. uh, products that's beneficial for the human body. You, you see, exactly. We, you see, we at the Ravens Vlog believe in transparency. That's why we're glad that Glitch Energy lays everything out there for you. Look at it. Like, literally, the 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 bit for, uh, excuse me, for Revive, uh, which, by the way, Angel, you left your cup here. So, uh, oh, I was wondering where he went. I thought that I left it at work or something. Nope, I, I sent you a message Sunday night that you left it there. My bad, I see, forgot. See, guys, you can zoom in and you can actually see the actual bit. See, uh, total carbs, zero. Total calories, zero. Total sugars, zero. Vitamin C, uh, magnesium, sodium, potassium, calcium. Which, by the way, all four of those are your basic electrolytes, by the way. That's some uh, that's some uh, health ed for you, and they also have uh, let's see here some uh, hydration uh, blends that only Glitch Energy uses, like the Hydra 4G uh, chelated mineral blend, uh, also raw coconut water powder. Uh, I don't know how they manage that, but it's freaking amazing. Uh, also uh, a- a- another uh, tonic called Aquaman. They also have taurine astrogen, uh, which is uh, which is a uh, ginseng uh, extract, and uh, you've also got other ingredients in here as well, uh, and uh, th- th- and. And uh, like I said, it's all right here, plain as day, sweet and simple, to the point, and it's transparent, and that's why we're proud to be partnered up with Glitch Energy. Again, go to glitchenergy.com, use our promo code FLOCKFUEL for 20% off your purchase, and once again, thank you Glitch Energy for supporting the Ravens Flock. You're stuck with us for a year. You have no choice. Thank you. Much appreciated. You will not regret this. They are not regretting this. And also, I want to say hello to you, to you guys over here in the chat. Carrie C., Chris Lisi Randosama, Nikki Bella, and Lisa Boo Thank are all you. up in the chat. Thank you guys for joining us here on the Black Files. We appreciate you immensely. And the Strugglers up in the chat. Hey, up there, Struggler. You hey, just my up. boy. Now, if, if actually, now, Blanche, before you get into the main story, um, I just want to do a little brief shout out because you did, you and Angel did mention it earlier. Um, folks, we do appreciate you guys tuning in this uh, uh, past Sunday for Super Subathon 9. Um, it was a lot of fun. We had a great time. We played Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and then we transitioned over into the Japanese imported Mario Party 3 for the Nintendo 64 with our special guest, Toy Slasher, who played along with us and trolled us so horrendously. And thanks to you, viewers, we broke to we, we have finally hit. 1500 subscribers and we're only gonna go further up you see that, that was you, th- this was a chief every thanks moment, to you guys you see that every moment and every subs. year from counted because you guys were there so and uh yeah we're and we do use vidIQ in order to help with our uh, uh in order to help with our analytics and in order to make sure that we're uh, tailoring our content and uh, over here to our needs so thank you vidIQ that's not a sponsorship that's a service that we use it's also used by Steph the Alter Nerd so highly recommended uh if you're a yeah. YouTuber. um and Brandon Torres is in the chat hey up Brandon welcome Hello. to Black Files now I want to get into the topic I want to get into this because. Um, I know this is a little bit more obscure to a lot of our viewers, but I wanted to just remind you guys, 
We at the Ravens Flock, we started off with with very simple uh, with very simple services over here with very simple uh, goal, which is the the, uh, the way to uh, which is uh, to cover uh, nerd and pop culture news, especially within the anime convention community. That's where we have our roots firmly and proudly planted. We are nerds who go to cons. We go to cons to hang out with our friends, to meet new friends, to check out cosplayers, to check out uh, 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 to check out different guests. Guests and actors, voice actors, costumers, uh, performers of every kind. We go to see different panels. Angel and uh, and Jose go to check out the dealers rooms. I check out the video game rooms along with them. Sometimes there is a manga library, which, by the way, always awesome. Whenever they have one of those, you know. Like, and we also attend. And we also attend different panels and different performances that they have. Yep. Uh, like yes. for, for example, when I went to MegaCon in Orlando last year, um, it was literally MegaCon. Uh, it was a freaking nightmare of a gigantic airplane hangar to walk through. But inside, like the end parts, where the pavilions actually are, where you can have panels and everything, um, th- there was a uh, there was actually a dance troupe that uh, they're called Noise Complaint. They're uh, they're awesome, and what they do is they're they're basically nerds. They do uh, themed cosplay and stuff, but they also uh, but what they do is um, shoot. Uh, it's basically uh, uh, it's basically tap dancing uh, with style, and like and it's and they, isn't that river dancing? Um, it's like a uh, uh, it's like a fusion of river dancing, tap dancing, cosplaying, and cos performance. So all blended together, you know. And noise complaint; those guys are fun. Uh, they got uh, they've got some great people there. So, so shout out to them. Um, Angel- another, I'll give you another example. Um, last year's holiday Matsuri. Uh, it was my second time attending a, uh, a an orchestral concert from Somnio Strings. They're a quartet band based off here in Florida, and they tour oh, yeah. around all the Florida conventions, and they play different songs uh, from different animes, video games, and movies. See, a string quartet. How often can you say like, "Oh, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to culturally enrich myself"? Where at a nerd gathering? What? Hey, I do remember quite well that we were in that concert. They have some sick tunes, and they even had a bit of a crowd pleaser at the end. They capped it up with jam. Uh, sorry, tank. The Cowboy Bebop official. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Stuff and so, so okay, for the so for the so for the sake of this topic, this is yeah. For the sake of this topic, this is pretty much uh, uh, us uh, returning to formula. Well, not exactly yes. returning, just making sure that uh, that our roots are well hydrated. I said that we have our roots firmly planted. One of the key things that you want to do when you're tending to your tree of life, that is the raven's flock, is make sure that your roots stay firmly hydrated and healthy. And to do that, of course... Which is why you water it with the blood of traitors. No, you water it with the with the nectar of knowledge and camaraderie. What the fuck kind Fine, of? Fine, if you want to be like that. Ugh. I was like, what the hell kind of uh, uh, of uh, watering are you doing, you nutball? Unfortunately, unfortunately, like yeah, unfortunately, like all things in the inver- in our world, we have to take the good with the bad, and that also and that includes nerd convention conventions. And when it comes to uh-huh. the bad, depending on how publicly embarrassing it is, those deficiencies do tend to shine. I'm afraid so. Now, um, you're probably wondering what the hell is this thing, Ohio Con, that we're looking at. Um, It's exactly what it sounds like. It's an anime convention that's uh, located in Columbus, Ohio. Ha. Hence, Ohio Con. Ha. Okay. Yeah. Clever joke is over. Um, But you get... Damn. Like, it's, it's, uh, like, what, what... Uh, what, like what more can I say about it? Like okay, the joke writes itself. I'm not here to I'm not here to crap on it. Or I'm not here to not crap on it. But then again, it's like, bleh, it's neither here nor there. Um, these guys just finished their 2024 convention, uh, and it took place this past weekend, the same weekend where we had our subathon here. Um, that was uh, let's see here, bleh, bleh, open, open says me. Okay, yeah, so yeah, it was uh, January 19th to the 21st. And uh, it happened at, right here, at, right there at the uh, Hyatt Regency Columbus and Greater Columbus Convention Center. Basically, the, high, the, the Columbus, Ohio version of like the Orlando World Center Marriott. Except, you know, it's Hyatt instead of Marriott. Point is, big ass convention space, big ass legendary con, which had okay. its start back in 2001. I wish I was making that up. Wow. Yeah. This thing is old enough to drink. And boat and drive. 
and engage in reckless decisions that will leave him married with children that he's not ready to take care of, forcing him to pay child support when the inevitable divorce system ruins his life. Um, but will he co-sign on a car, Angel? Will they co-sign in a car? They tried, but they didn't have enough credit score. Oh, Ooh. God. Uh, real quick, I want to. <laughs> but no, but joke, jokes aside, this uh, yeah, no, this sounds like yeah, the con is older than MetroCon for, for goodness sake. Yeah, just Impressive. a couple hairs older. Um, also, Struggler, real quick, want to give a shout out for the and congratulations, thank you for that five dollars super chat. Ah, thanks, my dude. Thank you thank very you, much. Gabby. Your uh, continued support is immensely appreciated. He says, "Glad to see you hit your sub goal. Glad to see you guys grow and go even further beyond." As you like Thanks, to say, bro. "Ah, you get the bit." Uh, congrats, see you in T eight, uh, Angel. What the hell is T eight? T eight, T eight. What is T eight? I, I I could have sworn I'm remembering, but I I apologize. My brain is not working at maximum right now, so I'm not quite sure. <laughs> what that is. You're fine, dude. It's okay, Angel. Uh, we'll help. We'll we'll get you back with your uh, with your glitch cup so you can mix it up properly. Uh, so Thank uh, you. yeah. Um, let me see. Also, Planet Q's queens in the chat. Hey, Planet Q. Hello. Uh, welcome and thank you very much for having been an inner flocker for thirteen months. Holy crap! Unbelievable. Thank you so much again. Also, Planet Q's queen, your support is immensely appreciated. She says, hi, boys. Sorry I've been missing. Been working a lot at the arena for basketball and concerts. Gearing up for Madness of February and the Chaos of March. You got no Perfectly understandable. We're all pretty busy this time of the year. It's been insane, and we totally out... Uh, uh, we're totally... Uh, all right. Oh, T8. Tekken 8. That's what they're... Oh, Yes. Thank you for reminding me. That game is coming out soon. I gotta get my hands on it. And God, we gotta do. We gotta do a chapter of, of Tekken Eight, guys. We, we're, we gotta. We're gonna do. Yeah, Tekken but unfortunately, yeah, but unfortunately, Tekken Eight isn't available for the PlayStation Four. It isn't. It's not. It's not. I took a look at it. I, I looked it up myself. I'm gonna have to start saving some money then. You gotta be. But we kidding. will. We will get Tekken Eight in due time. Fear or not, we just oh have to save God, a few pennies. Right. It's all right because due to my hard work. Money is coming my way in the future due to important aspects. And I might be able to do what nobody expects to. And this is not a guarantee, but I might be able to get my hands on a PS5 in the future. Like, for real this time. Angel, are you serious? Are you going to... Uh, the, but, Angel, in order for you to do that, you have to believe it's real. Are you ready I know, to believe? I know. Allow me to give you an example. It is said that in difficult times, man would turn to the sun and pray to it in the form of a god. Well, obviously, science has made us understand that the sun is not a god. However, it is my belief that through pure prayer and strained belief, man may yet acquire the impossible. So if I paste these two pieces of white cardboard to my PS3 and I pray as hard as possible, I'm sure something's going to happen. Just remember, you can't do the line goes up prayer at it. It will just turn it into a PS2. No, no. If I do the line go up, it will somehow have even less games. But yeah, that would oh, be God, that would yeah. be worse. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> All right, but we'll 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 tackle that when we get to it. But let's get back to the discussion of OhioCon. Folks. Okay, now OhioCon yes. uh, has been a uh, well lauded and well celebrated uh, anime convention, and uh, and and uh, for many years it has enjoyed a uh, reputation of being one of the good ones, uh, where where you can get to see. Uh, uh, like I said over here, it started off, wow, the Sheraton Airport Hotel in Cleveland. Jesus, it's been a while. Yeah, all the way up to, like I said, the Hyatt Regency Columbus Convention Center, uh, Hyatt Regency uh, Hotel, uh, also in Columbus. Uh, oh. And, and uh, Jesus jumped up, Christ. Uh They've had guests over the years such as Greg Ayers, Laura Bailey, Johnny Young Bosch. Uh, I'm just going through uh, the list of all the different uh, uh, years that it's been up. So f stemming from 2001 onward, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Holy crap. Tiffany Grant. Uh, uh, let's see. Scott Simpson. Uh, Tiffany Gr More Tiffany Grant. Uh, let's see here. Fred Gallagher. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Wow. Uh, Chris Patton. Uh, like I said, Monica Rial, Greg Ayers, uh, Robert De Jesus, Jackson Lee, Scott McNeil. Yes. Uh, Our boy. Yep, John Young Bosch. Uh, let's see here. Uh, more Scott McNeil, Vic Nicaragua, uh, Christopher Scott. It was mostly just Scott McNeil cosplayed as the other guests. No, no, no. Scott McNeil, you'll see he only showed up twice. Um, oh, wait, no. He's been around there a little more than that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, thrice. Good. Okay. 
Uh, that makes me feel slightly better. Uh, it, like I said, this is, uh, and you could see over the years, it's steadily boasted a wonderful amount of people showing up. Uh, it started with 800 people showing up at the convention mm-hmm. and steadily rising approximately seven or 8,000, 10,000, 11,000, 12,500. For some reason, they stopped counting in 2013 onward. I don't know why. I don't know why anyone would do that uh, until last year. Uh, from January 19th to the 22nd, where they boasted an estimated 13,000 paid attendees uh, at the convention. So, fantastic. A wonderful time had by all. Any, anyone running a convention would call that a welcome success. Like it's Consider me properly impressed with such a level of growth. Many cons struggle to even get close to have that level of numbers. Or guests. Right? I mean, seriously, it's a pain in the butt to manage these things. I actually remember I've spoken with a, a con owner, a legend in the world of uh, anime cons here in Florida. I asked him many years ago, what does it take for, like, what do you actually need to start or to build a, a convention here in Florida? He looked. Me I think squ- I remember this. It was he, a long time ago. Yes, he looked me square in the eye and he said, the first rule about building a con in Florida don't. It's wow. fucking expensive. Don't do it. You will. Dis- it doesn't help that recently, due to events occurring with other cons, its reputation in Florida in particular has been somewhat tarnished. And as a result, the once fragile trust between the actual locations and the con itself, while not quite shattered, it has been negatively affected due to unwelcome influence. Now, be that as it may, it appears as if we, uh, it, it, it appears as if the issues of uh, of anime cons having either troublesome uh, leadership, uh, troublesome money management, troublesome issues with uh, attendees or ta- or guests, are basically just freaking trouble in general. Apparently, it does not restrict itself simply to the state of Florida. Darn. Now, I actually remember. Back in November, hearing about this story, but I didn't know what to make of it, and I knew that it was still far too small and far too burgeoning to uh, be able to make anything of it. But lo and behold, apparently OhioCon had been dealing with uh, what was uh, what's basically best known as well uh, a boycott, and the boycott. I'm afraid the call is coming from inside the house. What? Dun, dun, dun! No. Please elaborate, because okay. cons are, sadly, not a bend to idioticy and social and drama and relationship crap happening behind the scenes. But you're telling me that not only do we have a boycott, we have a, a sabotage? Not a sabotage, Angel. A revolt. Oh, my. A protest. Not just a, a union? Boy- Almost a union. Okay, so let me explain this to you guys as simply as I can. Actually, you know what? Why should I waste my breath? Because uh, thankfully, I can use infographics to hey, help out. live hey. research. Yep, and this was brought forward uh, back in November. This was the uh, this was in November twelfth. <laughs> I've even even my freaking response is still there uh, when I uh, nice. when I uh, when I got it on there. Um, this was uh, shared by uh, someone on Twitter at Nekoyasha, also known as Danny Gilgamesh von Regan. Um, they're a thank cos- you for the information, Danny. Yep. This per- this person is a cosplayer out of Cleveland, and uh, let me see here. I actually want to see. You know what? They gave us information. We shall give them a follow. What, uh, wouldn't you agree that's at least worthwhile? Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, Danny Gilgamesh von Regan. That is a really long name. I- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to, uh, to Neko hey, Yasha there. Hey, I thought my full name was long. No, you're, you're, you know, that's, just a, that's just your long last name. Okay, so back on November 9th, um, they, uh, they actually were, had been sharing, uh, 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 some screenshots from discussions from within the OhioCon Discord server. So this, these discussions were very, um, f- 
fraught. They were very contentious here. And that's where, uh, that's where, uh, D- uh Danny had gone ahead and, um, gave, uh, given us this, uh, uh this, uh, uh, nice TLDR about what is happening with OhioCon. Thank you to former senior leadership and volunteers for taking the time to make these infographics to spread the word. I've also added all text for those who need it. So. What is happen- What happened with OhioCon? OhioCon's governing organization, the Cultural Exchange Society, Inc., I guess that's the, that's the company that owns it, removed most of the convention's senior leadership from their roles. Senior leadership wow. unanimously went on strike and demanded reinstatement of the convention director. All firings happened as a result of decisions made at senior leadership meetings that CSEI was invited to and expected to attend. CSEI votes were not counted because they were not given. Is OhioCon canceled? At this time, CSEI is still planning for OhioCon to take place as planned without its senior leadership team. How can I support? Boycott OhioCon 24. Do not pre-register, sign up for events, or reserve a hotel within OhioCon's room block. Spread the word online with hashtag NoHioCon. Very simple shit. How can I support striking OhioCon volunteers? uh, Boycott the OhioCon. Use the hashtag and our explanatory graphics on social media to spread the word. Send your concerns to the Culture Exchange Society, uh, Inc. via OhioCon social media channels, uh, be it uh, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and ask for your refund. For those who have already purchased their pre-reg, please reach out to justin.nordell at ohiocon.org for your refund. Refunds will not be processed until December 1st, 2013. Basically, putting it simply, hey, we would like, perhaps, treat us like people, and the CSEI said, no, how about instead, you're fired? What? I, why? What? But what the because hell England, we've learned, it. if there's any, because they're elites, man, they're, 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 I, don't, I don't have any clever jokes for it, because why would they? Why would they want, why would they listen to the people? I am genuinely puzzled about what brought this decision in the first place. Were the senior members asking for a bigger paycheck? Because you don't just fire people out of nowhere. There has to be a reason why people are getting fired. Oh, I'm actually looking uh, uh, forward to uh, uh, to uh, checking this out over here. Um, uh, the point. They can't afford to fire them because they need them to help run the convention. Thing. Because, you know, whoever's in charge can't run it by themselves. Exactly. Uh, well, apparently they tried. And uh, this was also brought forward um, in in same uh, same said uh, situation here. <laughs> what the what fuck? The hell? Um, I shall refer you folks to uh, the comment section of uh, of r slash Columbus uh, under OhioCon hostile takeover to bust unionizing. Get a load of this, folks. You're gonna fucking love it. What? Ba-ba-ra-ba-ba-bum. All right, dig this. Opening. I said opening. Oh God. Okay. So this is taken from uh, the a screenshot in the Ohio Con Facebook page. Cultural Exchange Society Inc. Board of Directors removes senior leadership team in hostile takeover. Melissa Phelps, the president of the board of uh, directors of CESI, has initiated a hostile takeover by firing and removing access from a majority of the senior leadership team. This sudden and unexpected move has sent shockwaves through the community of OhioCon volunteers. The senior leadership team at OhioCon has been an integral part of the convention's success, providing guidance, experience, and dedication to the event's growth and improvement over the years. Their contributions have helped OhioCon become one of the most beloved and well-attended conventions in the region. The removal of the senior leadership team has raised concerns among the Ohio Con volunteer community about the future direction of the con and the well-being of the volunteers who pour their hearts into making the event a success year after year. Fucking hell. So yeah, it's basically, oh, no, fuck you, go away. But, but why? I'm still, go- uh, like, it's, it, it's, it's insane. Yeah, it's an internal uh, power struggle over here. Um, let me put it to you this way. Notice some of the key words that are used there. The staff mm-hmm. in OhioCon work primarily on a volunteer basis. Oh, yes. Okay. Right? Yes. What do volunteers not get? Paid. Correct. Money. Oh, I see where this is going. So guess what the t- uh, the staff at OhioCon was asking for this year? Hey guys, could we have like some Money. material compensation for all this bullshit hard work? What, what do you mean on fire? I didn't even finish my sentence. Yeah, 
that's it. That's literally it. Jesus Just, Christ. Money, 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 money. I was going to say, Angel, guess what? You're fired. That is your sentence. But I didn't even ask for anything. I just showed up for the show. How about we do anyway? Anyway. But wow. Yeah, no, it wouldn't surprise me. Like, cons are extremely big events. They require a lot of volunteer work. Like, yeah, I get it's volunteer work, but shit, man. They've been doing this for years. You know, what's even Why more frustrating is that this isn't necessarily a bad thing to ask for uh, uh, the the convention uh, op, uh the the folks who uh, who help operate the convention are simply asking for assistance with you know living but no they're not allowed for that that's not allowed why why should anyone ask for uh suitable compensation why because you know why like especially for a convention which you guys saw the numbers you guys saw how it had been ballooning ballooning yeah. over the years 800 1200 fucking uh hold on i'm going to freaking zoom in on this spot of the screen just so that people can see it again from 2001 move more bigger even biggerer bigger lettering bigger er Bigger arrest. The line has never been more open right, than it 800, is now. 800, 1200, 2000, 3000, 4000, 4400, 6000, 7000, fucking 8000. Year after year, you get over a thousand year, uh, 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 freaking uh, attendees more and more over the years. 11, 12,000. Like, it, 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 like, those kind of. Those kind of growths, that like that kind of growth on an exponential level, is the kind of shit that convention owner, uh, like uh, like and uh, dr uh, people who dream of becoming con owners could only literally dream of. Yeah. They li they're li they're stuff. literally beg they're like this is like this is amazing. We're either doubling up or uh begging for like or like gating more fucking uh like uh, uh, just like either incrementally big uh, more or just like exponentially more. It's like growing on a steady scale. With that growth, they were able to grow in venue. They were able to grow in influence. They were able to put more revenue towards the Columbus, Ohio Chamber of Commerce and all that shit. Do you have any idea how much money these cons actually bring in for hotels, for local businesses, for uh for like people looking to uh dine at the local pizza joints? Local pizza joints love nerds because we yeah, will they eat whatever so shit money. they feed us. To a degree. To a degree, of course. We, listen, even we have standards. But point in case is, while I understand while volunteer work may have been necessary back in the early days when the con was still small, the con is massive, enormous, astronomical in size. It needs more work, organization, security than ever. And oh, oh, I just realized what the problem is. What's the problem, What's Angel? If they choose to become volunteers, but then they get paid, then they are no longer volunteers. They are now temporary workers. And temporary workers require insurance in case of accidents. Otherwise, you'll be signing some very, very busy way. Basically, actually hiring people to work at the con, even for temporary work, not only involves payment, it also involves coverage, insurance, and a host of other things required to maintain the place running. In other words, they had this. They did it because it was easier. That that's it. That's the explanation. That's the simplest explanation. You're damn right. Oh, it's easy. It's not just greedy. It's good old-fashioned convenience. Now, thankfully, in response to what was going on with this shit, um, the uh, the the folks who were working together uh, at uh, at OhioCon had joint had joined forces, and like this is another thing. Since Jose, you actually brought up the U word, the dreaded union. Word. <gasps> yes. You know, that favorite uh set of monsters that you like to play in your Yu-Gi-Oh deck with the VWXYZ monsters. <laughs> They're I union mean, monsters. Angel I mean, yeah. Jose unionized! We have to destroy him! Call there quickly only call one the solution. Pinkertons and challenge them to a duel. No, I'm sorry, Roger, that's not gonna work because Angel has already been busted by the Union. It's called Isabel in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I'm sorry, Juan. I got hit by low income affordable housing. I ain't never going back. Man, <laughs> fooled, foiled again. 
Okay. Well, so, yeah. Now, this is very clearly a case of either we go through the paperwork that for an event that will only be done once a year and pay for insurance and salaries and whatever the hell they're thinking about this time, or we just let you go and get some naive young idiot with starry eyes and a dream in his head to just do all the work for us, like they always do. Again and again and again. It's basically the game industry all over again. There is no need to keep the veterans. There is a steady amount of young, eager rookies that will do whatever we tell them to, because who wouldn't want to work for the con of their dream? Bro, this shit is disgusting. But it's, unfortunately, this is how they operate this crap. It's it really is depressing when you uh, when you look at it uh, uh, in such uh, <sighs> it's such a black and white uh, uh, way. But you know what? You're not wrong in all of this. I shit. wish I was wrong, bro. Now you know how I feel, Angel. <laughs> all the time, I hate being right about this kind of shit. Now, well, yeah, as you can imagine, this is very disgusting. It doesn't matter if it's on a technicality. If you got somebody working this hard to do this much, they should at least be properly compensated. Come on, they deserve that much, I like to think. Now, here's the thing. In late 2022, the year before, or rather a, a year or so before all this shit was going on, uh, some of the staff and some volunteers of OhioCon had come together to form a, co uh, a collective bargaining party called the Conventions of Orlando Volunteer Event Network. Or, Ooh. if you want to use their uh, shortened name... Coven. Ha. Ah. So yeah, a lot of naming puns up in Ohio, I guess. I don't fucking know. Um, and it looks as if they, it, it looks as if uh, from the information that we got from, uh, uh, from Danny Gilgamesh von Regan, uh, again, really long name, but cool cosplayer. Um, again, thank you for the posts. It, it, and it, it looks as if they actually went in good faith and arranged a meeting between the uh, between themselves representing uh, the staff at OhioCon with the CESI. And from that infographic we got, the CESI basically no showed. They no called no showed. So like, okay, I guess that's oh. that. I guess that uh, makes our decision for us. So on uh, let's see, on October sixth. They went ahead and uh, on October 6th, uh, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, they went ahead and posted on the Coven Twitter page. Uh, let's see. Following the update from CESI and the lack of acceptable response to the demands set forth by the senior leadership of OhioCon, Coven has unanimously voted to go on strike as of 9 p.m. Eastern Time today, October 6th, 2023. For further information, we direct you to the link in the bio. Shit. Yeah, I so mean, yeah, this was all, like you took away all the other options, you know, except violence. But I'm pretty sure that's called terrorism, and we're not allowed to do that here or some shit. No, hey, you we're not allowed, allowed, Angel. What do you it's... think was going to happen? Now, and there was one other tiny technicality. Since these people are volunteers and not employees, strictly speaking, Coven is not, per se, a union. If it were a union, then there'd be a whole other mess of shit that they would have to also put on their end because you, because uh, people working in unions also have to be able to come together in order for the union to provide for health insurance as, uh, as well. Correct. So, so that's since, even more payments and more money being thrown all over the place. Exactly. And that would require union dues. That would require union fees, something that isn't available if you're a volunteer who's not getting paid. So by my figuring over here, uh, like Coven, I would I would call it a proto union, uh, for lack of a better term, only because in order for them to be a union, they would have to be paid. But in order for them to be paid, the freaking CESI would have to agree to let the volunteers of OhioCon be paid in the first place, which was the point of yeah. contention to begin with. And it's like okay, like we can't even start with step one. Because motherfuckers won't even start with step zero with us. So, fine. Fuck y'all. Also, hello there, Aaron Cooper. Welcome to the Black Files. I appreciate you joining us here. And yeah, like, isn't that, like, it's a little, uh, it's a little odd. But at the same time, it, I guess it's, like, the best way to sort of germinate the foundation of a union within con within the con communities. And for something like this happening in Ohio, of all places, in Columbus, Ohio, 
I, I don't know much else that's newsworthy that happens in Columbus. It's like in Portland to say nothing important happens in Portland when it comes to pro wrestling. I've asked you. You've never given me one good thing that happens in Portland. Because, well, nothing, that good, because nothing happens that, in Portland. Uh, Sorry, what was that, Angel? Well, you know, there was that time that... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I think, think so. I know what Angel's alluding to, and the less we talk about it, the better. No, uh, he can't come up with anything. Nothing important in pro wrestling happens in Portland. Just like no one expects any any big news coming out of uh, out of Columbus, Ohio. And I know I'm being very uh, <laughs> like, oh, how dare you? Like, I'm fucking around. I'm kidding. Like, I, that being pretty- said, it is a shame that the one time we get actual news from Ohio is, hey guys. The con became a corp one. F top everybody again. Ain't that pretty? It's like, really? Can, can we try something different for a change, please? Like, can, can I have a company actually do something nice for its workers for five seconds? Like, that seriously. Would be nice to see. Can, like, uh, you should have like a, like, a, like a bonus, like a revenue share uh, program fucking thing. Hey, guess what? Freaking, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Ohio Con uh, made, uh, like, made a more billion dollars in uh, this year. Let's go ahead and actually. Uh, like uh, uh, let's offer the folks who work as staff the opportunity to become full time employees and be uh, and get themselves union with with pensions and with insurance and with uh and with uh, uh working conditions and with uh, no that sounds too much to stop asking for more than bare minimum but n- why because money but why because, because too much money must go up like. I no, I I actually understand why because of one, one specific thing: the nature of operating a convention. Even though the main operations of it all is very um is like it's limited to just the three day event or four day event. If you're a big wig con or whatever fucking mecha con four days. Whereas meanwhile, if the rest of the year, it's like, okay, we're securing insurance for the venue. We're securing this talent. We're going through paperwork on uh, this happening. Oh, there's there's issues with the local law enforcement. We have to make sure that we're working with the uh, uh, we're working with them in order to keep things up to code. Oh, the fire marshal wants to make sure we're not blocking things. Okay, well, we're going to have to Makes reset sense. our for- security like, and safety. Like, yeah, a lot of that shit is a lot of delegation either within, like, the city or county, min- like, municipal uh, bureaus um, or dealing with, uh, if you have guests there, dealing with talent agencies and getting contracts for them and working out what the terms for those contracts are, what's within the budget of the convention, XYZ, I'm ABC. Eagles. I get that some parts of that are not something that you go into an office and punch in 9 to 5, so you're not necessarily getting 9 to 5 pay, which means you're not necessarily getting 9 to 5 income, which doesn't require 9 to 5 fucking uh, benefits. So, I get that, but at the same time, I don't fucking get that. Why the fuck can't we? Huh? It wouldn't it be because amazing it's if easier you had not to. Like a dedicated office for these people. It'd be fucking awesome. It would be awesome. It'd be nice. Normally that would be the case, but like I said, the event only happens once a year. There is literally not enough motivation to do so. Actually, I meant to ask you something. Why? Eh. What about the other big cons? Do the volunteers of the big cons like MetroCon or whatever the other, what was the name? I forgot the old Holiday Matsuri. Do they get something out of their work or is it just volunteering for the sake of volunteering? Okay, we're talking okay, about so the I can actually, I can, primarily. Yeah, I was going to say, I can answer the question on the MetroCon side. So, for the volunteer staff, they're informed. From what I've been told, they are informed ahead of time that it's volunteer that that it's volunteer work. Okay, for the volunteer staff only. For the Metricon internal staff, that's a whole different story. Okay, that's like that's a whole different story. That's not something that we're privy to. It's more about like okay, the actual staff staff is maybe like. Actually, you know what? Why am I guessing when I could go to their website and they'll have, like, meet our staff? <laughs> I'm not stupid. You are. That works. <laughs> I'm not Because dumb. if this is something that has been going on for some time, let's be honest, these cons have lasted for years. But if you're telling me that the majority of them have to rely on unpaid volunteer work to properly operate, I fear that what we're seeing with this con might be something that will, unfortunately, repeat itself. Because what you're telling me here is that this is an unsustainable model. 
No wonder they happen only once a year. If they tried to do it more than once a year, they would die within that very year. Yeesh. Yeah, no, do, like uh, it, it would actually, it would actually legitimately die on the vine, and nobody wants that to happen. Okay, I guess I'm wrong. Uh, it, I'm over here double checking because I could have sworn uh, that Metrocon had like a thing for hey, meet our staff kind of thing. Like, no, it just got this other thing. Hang on, sorry about that. That's the that's still the Coven Twitter page. My bad. <laughs> ha. I'm not dumb. You are. Uh, well, yeah, I fear that if this is the way have been going, as the cons are getting bigger moving farther away, getting increasingly expensive with their guests and their work, the more it moves and the more it keeps demanding from its volunteering staff, it will eventually result in them once again asking for some sort of compensation. And then I hate to be that guy, but I fear that what we're seeing here is either the beginning of something that will continue to happen or something that may have been happening for a while already. Well, I'm actually, okay, I think I found where to go. Okay, the contact us. Okay, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so there's like literally 11 people in total uh, that you can count uh, for like the official staff staff of the team. Uh, so. 11. So, yeah, like, 11 people are, like, the core staff, and then from there, anyone working under them are, like, the, what do you call it, are... Mm, or, vol or operate on volunteer basis. Uh, so, uh, and usually volunteers who work at the convention are compensated in the form of, hey, guess what? Um, you will only have to work certain amount of times within the convention event itself, and we will comp you for the actual ticket, so you don't actually have to pay to work in the uh to work in the convention uh, to be in the convention because you're working it. So. That's like that's the compensation that a lot of the volunteers go. So I get uh, this, see. but it's also like something as th big as OhioCon, which again that that one's been getting pretty ginormous uh, over the years. That's not something. To, that's not, not that's not nothing to sneeze at. Uh, let me take a look at what um, the the what the uh, chat is saying over here. Uh, Struggler saying, "To be fair, I don't hate when people unionizing when they need it. I just hate it when the unions uh, uh, when they become the same as the corpos <coughs> sag after uh, <laughs> because it costs too much and people will cut corners to maximize profit. It sucks, but I get it." Also, Jason Morgan's in the chat. Hey, up, Jason Morgan. Welcome to the Black Files. We appreciate you, fam. Here, uh, hey, Raves Fox. So, as I promised, I mentioned you on my Facebook, Instagram, and my TikTok. Let's go. We are family. Uh, Thanks, yes, there dude. We go. Uh, read the thank chat, you, Mr. Guys, Morgan. I I appreciate Yay, it. Thank you very much. Honestly, you Jason know what? I'm, I'm going to be the controversial man here and say that this entire volunteer system screams of free labor to me. And the fact that you're giving them a free pass to the con doesn't mean anything because the only thing you do in the con is spend money. You know where the money goes, right? Yeah. It goes right to... back to the goddamn con. Well, here's what's up the convention itself makes money in different ways, Angel. For example, um, and since I've got the Metrocon page here up as as an example, um, I, like that's, that's uh, I, I guess I'll go ahead and I'll use this as uh, my example here for you. If you were to, for example, uh, want to uh, become, uh, want to be a vendor at the convention, you have two different options. You can be in the vendor's booth, you can have a vendor's booth either within the hall, within the lines of the dealer's room, or in one of the corners of those blocks, you know? So, like, uh, niche uh, uh, placement. For an inline vendor's booth, they, uh, uh, the, the application and, the tr uh, and, the, uh, and approval would be $600. It's $700 wow. if you want a corner booth and if you're uh going into uh, if you want to open up for Artist Alley instead it'd be $300. So those are some ways that the convention makes their money. If you're going to hawk your wares at our con, you're that means you're taking up space in the room. That space is worth money. Here is how much money it's worth. Have you seen how many fucking vendors and artists are at those cons? It's Enough. not just the tickets. It's n which are not cheap either. So this yeah. is how, and these and these and these uh, fee these fees don't just go to the convention. The convention also has to then pay out to the venue, the Tampa Convention Center. How to pay out for whatever insurance company they're using to keep from being sued for you know some kid picking their nose on like the freaking uh, 
water faucet, like water fountain at the con, and then they split their nose uh, hole open or whatever the hell. Okay, I'm doing a very gross example, but you guys get what I mean. Um, <laughs> okay, no, we get I it. I actually saw that happen once. It was way, There was way more blood than it should have been. Gross. Kind of fucked up, honestly. Okay, so there's also guests, uh, uh, like, uh, so there's guests that they have to pay for the guests' travel, for the guests' room and board. They have to, uh, uh, they have to put up a deal with, uh, with hotels in the area. Like, okay, hi there, hotel, uh, number one, who is literally next door to us. We're having a con. People are going to want to stay in your hotel for our con. What would you say if we can tell you that we can guarantee you X amount of people will fill up X amount of rooms at your hotel? Okay, we like Mother. that. Money. Okay, but there's a thing. Since these guys are going to be wor- uh, are going to be coming to our event, they're going to be expecting a discount. What kind of discount can you work out? Well, here's the deal. If you ABC XYZ this much money to us, and we uh, and we uh, one two three four five six this discount, then we can set up X amount of uh, of rooms for the, uh, for the event for the uh, for your convention, and they'll give them this kind of pr- uh, discount for your convention if they book through you guys. Okay, sounds like a deal. Yay, money, money. It's a freaking business. You've got to negotiate with these fuckers, and it's a pain of the dick. Oh, God, I think that friend who told me not to start a con was right. He knew. The sheer amount of man and the logistics you got to run through. And the worst part is, though, it also has to be done for a business that is only going to be for, like, a couple of days only, and it has to make money. Because if it doesn't make money, then this entire endeavor has been for nothing, and now you're left in the red. Nobody wants to be left in the red. Comes live and die by for how much money they do on day one. You didn't do any money on day one? It's shit. Not, not just screwed. day one, it, but it's over. Like, uh, but if it's a two day con, you need both days to be a big banger hit. If they're yeah. not, it ain't gonna happen. Um, Especially if it's a weekend too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which is why everyone was so bewildered. L- last month at ho- for Holiday Matsuri being in the middle of the week, Wednesday through Friday. That was such a weird fucking block. Nobody understood why the hell. And then we had to, and then we realized, oh wait, it's because uh, the the folks at the Orlando World Center Marriott were very pissy and they didn't want to renew their contract with Holiday Matsuri. And like, well, okay, well, uh, well, this is the last year. We'll just run their contract. Okay, well, oh gee, it looks like this is the only time that we can spot you for this year Hmm. take it or leave it you can actually obligate it you ain't got a fucking choice (laughs) so yeah they basically found themselves in a difficult position so when you have all of that and then you have volunteers asking for compensation for their years of work they basically decide to do it time to give up like nah dude basically the volunteers i fear don't have much of a position of power to negotiate here because it's volunteer work. They know that they can just hire somebody else. They know that they will just hire somebody else. So if there is no position of power to negotiate from, then there is no negotiation to begin with. Angel? I hate to be like that, but yeah. How much do you know about the Sword of Truth series by Terry Goodkind? I actually heard a few things about it. I didn't mean to check it out one of these days. All right. L- let me just... Uh, let me just... Uh, 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 let me just give you two little things over here the first little thing uh is uh actually not just the na- name of the first novel but it's also one of the rules that are give uh, that are granted uh in the uh in the uh in the in the in the sort of truth series it's called the wizard's first rule okay you're going to love this <clears throat> hang on where is it where is it where is it hang on <laughs> Here we go. Wizard's first rule. People are stupid. Yes. They'll believe let's see here uh people are stupid given proper motivation almost anyone will believe almost anything because people are stupid they will believe a lie because they want it to believe it's true or because they're afraid it might be true. People's heads are full of knowledge, facts and beliefs and most of it is false yet they think it all true people are stupid they can only rarely tell the difference between a lie and the truth and yet they're confident they can and so are all the easier to fool 
Damn. Okay, so that's the wizard's first rule. Guess what the wizard's second rule is, Angel? What's the wizard's second rule? Expect the unexpected. Huh, I heard about that one. Remember that it is important. Because I'm going to tell you right now. So you're over here believing, you're saying that the folks who are in Coven, who are in the collective bargaining, the volunteers and staff of OhioCon are in no position of power to be able to demand any form of recompense or any form of uh, recognition or uh, support and are therefore at the mercy of the corpo that runs OhioCon. Yeah, I mean, what are they going to do in this case? What could they possibly do to negotiate when they know that they can be so easily replaced? You'd be surprised because that Not little me. hashtag of no Hyocon resonated. It was resonating from October onward to November. As a matter of oh. fact, yeah, it had been ringing through the annals of the interwebs, my dear friend. It was it was it was it was a it, it was a nightmare for the people operating within Ohio Con. And if you don't believe me, let's take a look at the results because this convention, like I said, just happened this past weekend. So oh. nothing speaks louder than imagery because images are worth a thousand words. Indeed. And before I go ahead and show off the lovely imagery that is uh, that, uh, that's, uh, that are singing these thousands of words, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the words in our chat. It uh, looks like Jason Morgan Thank you, and Chad. yeah, looks like Jason Morgan and Lisa Boo were discussing. Uh, Jason Morgan has been in rehab, so he's got rehab tomorrow for his leg. About two years ago, I had a wreck on my bike, and I ended up breaking my leg and messing up two ribs on my right side after wrecking. Since then, Ow. I've been working. Damn. My own- since then, I've been working my ass off to get ready to race again. Uh, my dad, who's retired, sat with me today and told me how proud he is of me of doing the hard work necessary to make a comeback. Uh, Lisa Boo congratulating him. Uh, uh, how about a shout out to Raven's Flock? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Glad I know you'll man. do it. Dude, Jason Morgan, you're the man. You're the man, man. Yay. You're getting there and embrace the speed again. And, and he's saying, so my first race back, I'm going to get a mention to the Raven's Flock. Dude, we appreciate that, Dude. man. Dude, that Thanks, is awesome. Man. Hell yeah. We yes. appreciate it, bro. And uh, I wasn't going to let a wreck stop me from my dream. Goddamn right. No, you've got a dream. And you're living it. And we're fucking proud of you, Jason. You get on that. The, you go ahead. And when, li- when life knocks you down, and, uh, 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 what you pick, the, you, uh, 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 what, you, uh, what you do is you, uh, if, and you, uh, if you get off, knocked off of that horse, you dust yourself off, you pick yourself up, and you eat that horse. Now yeah, go and amazing. eat that horse, Jason Morgan. Eat the shit out of the horse, Jason. Eat that we horse. Believe in you, bro. <sighs> it's hilarious. Uh, let's see, struggler. It's hilarious that all these people would simply make more money if they actually care for their work as an audience, as will they will uh, do better work and willing to spend more money. Yeah, go fucking figure, right? Wouldn't that, that be nice? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be fucking amazing one day. And you're right, uh, Jason Morgan. Is, he, he, it was. A, he's uh, the line from Wizard's First Rule reminded him of the exact same line that Agent K gives Will Smith in uh, Men in Black. Like, but don't you think people should know? Like, people are smart. Like, no, a person is smart. But people are dumb, panicky, uh, 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 bloodthirsty beasts, and you know it. Like talking to a guy who's uh, like a sergeant in the NYPD. So yeah, Will Smith knows it. Or, you know, like, what's his face? Agent J knows it. Uh, let's see. Uh, and uh, let's see. Stupid and panicky. Yeah, instead of cutting corners. You're damn right. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you guys the picture that was worth a thousand words. <clears throat> la, 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 la. Like I said, this shit speaks for itself. Uh, let's see. For instance, at Trash Queen, uh, like uh, Ohio, I just liked how Ohio Con came back after this, after their shit show of a weekend, and proceeded to play the victim. Maybe treat your staff and volunteers 
Not like shit. Crazy thought. Would it be nice? Let's see. And OhioCon, apparently this weekend they posted this. OhioCon would like to give a huge thank you to everyone who came out to support us this past weekend. We are truly grateful to you all. We want to thank the attendees, vendors, artists, and guests who left their homes to be with us this weekend. Thank you to, a new, uh, to our new volunteer staffers who joined us. And a huge thank you to our returning volunteer staff. We know that it's been hard going through these trials and tribulations of being bullied just for being volunteer staff at OhioCon. We understand it has been challenging and we thank you so much for being a part of this show. We appreciate you all so much. We're excited about new adventures and new events in the future. We know love. Uh, we know love is the only thing that will defeat hate. We love being part of this community. See you all next year at OhioCon 2025. Stay safe, everyone. Wow, they're really trying to say like we're being bullied for this. Sh- wow, fucking seriously. But, yeah, like that's that, that's that's just the beginning. Right that's just the beginning over here. Playing check, the victim is a very check this. tactic. Sunday, no, Sunday, the 21st. Uh, if, uh, from at uh, Three Frame Jab. This picture was taken in the middle of the day, Saturday, during Ohio Con. This is extremely telling. It's the south parking lot of the convention center. Available spaces, 253. Hmm. Angel? How convenient. How many parking spaces should you have available if you want a big ass legendary convention like OhioCon to uh, boast the numbers and to boast the success that it has been boasting from years before? Far more than 200, that's for no, freaking sure. Far less. The magic number you want available is zero. You want zero available parking because you want oh. all the parking full, because you want everyone to have gone there. The fact that 253 parking spaces were available on Saturday, no less, which, as anyone who's gone to a convention knows, is the prime time of the con. That's where you have the biggest attendance, where you have the biggest events, the most attendees. That's where you get the where you get the 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 thickest, rarest, and most well juiciest part of the steak. Even if the rest of the steak yes. is a little bit crispy on the outside, like a little more uh, well done than you like, but if the center, if that center of the cut is still soft and still tender, maybe just a little bit of juice, that you'll be okay. But no. No, 253. no. 253. This is empty. That means 253 took a look at this entire debacle and went, you know what? Nah. And those and that angel, those and that's for parking spaces available. And you have to imagine, like, say for the sake of argument, if each car represented at minimum an average of three people, like let's say if there's like one or two people going or uh, several people uh, going there, uh, you know, uh, like in carpool, right? And I'm doing yes. this as an as an estimate, like very rough estimate. Then what you're looking at is a possible lack of attendance by about 759 people at least. And that's from parking within the convention center itself. That's not oh. a small number to sneeze at, even when, you have, when you're have when you counting in the thousands. No, 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 not at all. See, as you're essentially a fifth, a fifth of a possible thousand is gone. How many, how much attendance did they have in the previous job? Yeah, that's ex- uh, like, uh, uh, like uh, they had 13,000 people in there. So that's apparently... Uh, like maybe nearly a thousand gone. So like maybe 12, maybe 11. We're not sure. But one there person managed to uh, take a photo of uh, the gaming room at Ohio Con and Angel. Anemic oh, no. would be generous. That bad, huh? From uh, Costco Wine Enthusiast at Misha underscore loves underscore you. I love that name. Costco Wine Enthusiast. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, nice. Take a look. Ooh, I see. Look at that gaming room. Disc, disc, disc. What and yes, that someone. Like witness. And yes, someone went ahead and photoshopped over a spirit Halloween banner. <laughs> okay, that was funny. But yeah, this itself, number one, is a fucking problem. I don't care what kind of con you have. If this is what you're calling for your 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 video gaming room. You suck at video gaming. It's pretty sad to witness. I'm like, not gonna lie. Like even even that makes me not want to go. 
Like Damn. even uh, fucking uh, what do you call it? Even uh, like uh, I know you went to Central Florida Comic Con. They didn't have very much uh, space. Or, like they didn't have very many games to go for. But every like, but the space was filled with at least a variety of different games. It was a little more spread out, but you could tell people were there and they were interested, yes. right? But yes. this is depressing. This is the saddest lore I ever seen, and they don't even got a clue, Mister. I can't make a man out of you. No, no, I can't. Okay, someone over here did a back rooms joke. Okay, that's bad. Uh, let's see here. This is okay. This is an actual photo of, of like the hallways in the convention. Okay, but first off, oh my god, get it away from me! Yeah, it's a long Furby uh, headpiece. Obviously, like someone doing a cosplay of a long Furby, but get, keep it away. Oh god. Yeah, no, keep it away. But this is all like me. Like, okay, if that's like, take a look up here where it says we're at the banner behind the Furby's ear. Main programming. Union Station A and B. So that is the panel room for, I suppose, the main events. That's right. Where the hell is our people? What people? That's scary. People, no, 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 no. What it's people? scary even with There without... are no people here. It's scary even without the Furby head. <laughs> and what's really sad yeah. is that Richard Epcar was a voice. It was a guest over there, man. Oh Damn. my god! I hope that I he love got... Richard Epcar. He's yeah. a cool dude. Like I hope that he got to uh, to. Uh, uh, I ho- I hope that he had a good showing for himself. I really do. Um, at Dorothy Fan, I don't know who this Dorothy Fan is. Oh, they're a voice actor. Okay, she okay. She's a voice actor there at Ohio Con. Cool. Looks like she's done. Um, let's see. What the hell? Am I looking at that right? Huh. Hold on, let me look at that. No. What, did she work on hentai or something? No, no, no. I'm just trying to find her thingy. Um, okay. Okay, there it is. Um, oh, come on. Why isn't it loading what I needed to? Really? You're not okay, so she's, to okay, so, uh, uh, all right, so she's done voice acting on Demon Slayer. She's done voice acting in Miraculous Ladybug. Hey. Uh, let's see here. She's voice acted in Fire Emblem Three Houses. Uh, let's see here. Um, she's also been, uh, in the s- second season of Kage, uh, of, uh, Kakeguri, uh, as well. Um, so she's a voice actor and, uh, she took some photos of herself there at Ohio Con. Uh, you know, so, uh, Ohio Con, day three, fun times. Um, and I'm not trying to shit on her part- uh, particularly, um, but again, the pictures tell, a, a very s- distinctive story. Take yeah, a look at the, the story of sadness. Okay, so we've got her t- uh, taking photos with with, uh, with uh, other guests here, which is fine. I have no issues. There's someone. Uh, there's a cosplayer with Dorothy Fan, but the dealer's hall behind her. Not this, because uh, this is a photo with her and Richard Epcar and other voice actors. That's cool. But this particular photo here, it gives me okay. Like it gives me either. It's early in the fucking morning Friday of the convention, and this is only the VIPs who are allowed in first to get their photos. So I'm worried that that's what it actually meant. Holy oh, fucking see, shit. I'm worried for a completely different reason. Why? See, I don't I don't expect the absence of a mere 200 people to impact the profits and numbers of the con. In fact, the fact that only that few decided not to show up, they'll most likely see it as a win. The only way this will truly make a dent is if this movement continues. Because, let's be honest, the the average consumer doesn't know about this. The average consumer doesn't know or care about any of this. So we got to get as much information as they can out there, and we got to show the world that this actually means something. Because the average person will not care. They just wish to be entertained. And if they're not entertained, they they, they don't care. (laughs) Exactly. They don't know, and let's not lie to ourselves, they care very little about this entire affair as long as they get exactly what they want so it becomes a case of how do we make this actually matter for the people out there the movement has to keep going as long as the movement keeps going and as long as more people continue to show their displeasure with the events then and only then will this entire movement will this boycott truly mean something people have to and i do pardon me for keep using that same gosh darn phrase Start voting. Start voting with a wallet. For lack of a better term, it's gotta be this way. 
Yeah, no. You um, show them uh, that they're actually disappointed and in sense with this terrible event. Because otherwise, well, they won't care, unfortunately. Well, Angel did... Oh, no, um, sorry, go ahead, Azay. You first. Oh, no, Angel does have a good point, like starting a movement. And uh, one of the effective ways of doing so is by spreading awareness, like especially on social media. Like the more people, uh, the more uh, the more you share the posts, you know, the more eyes you get on the, the on the problem at hand. To give a small example, and this actually is going to be one of the topics that we're going to talk about this Saturday, is that I'm not going to get into the details because I want to save it. But there is recent controversy surrounding a vendor that's going to be at MegaCon Orlando next weekend called Gallery Panda. And uh, like I said, there's a lot of information still developing. We're going to have a full story on it this Saturday. But the frequency of how many of my friends, how many uh, how many people are sharing this post and, you know, expressing their and expressing their, you know, Concern. grievances against it. Yeah, concern, concerns, grievances and frustration against what the vendor is doing, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's not something that you easily can ignore, no matter how many times you try to, you know, delete comments. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. And that's another thing. Jose, uh, Jose, you're getting too much. La, 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 yeah, la, la. Good, good. Wait, I'm going to stop right there. The next episode, but yeah. Um, here's the thing. Um, it might not look like there were a lot of people over there. And uh, to answer uh, Aaron Cooper's uh, uh, question, no, those aren't empty booth markings on the floor. That photo with uh, Dorothy Fan. Uh, no, those are that was uh, uh, those are markers for like the lines of the VIP. Um, so yeah, no, so that's what uh, that uh, so that's what that is. Um, uh, so that's what that uh, those uh, uh, blue lines at the bottom of the of the photo there is. That's like the uh, the line for the VIP uh, for like for the actual uh, autograph lines. Um, now I actually do need to point one other thing out. Uh, since we are on on top of this here, I'm checking out the rest of the uh, imagery that I'm that is coming out of uh, of uh, the No Ohio Kind hashtag, and you'd be surprised who else is covering this. But Angel, I think you'd appreciate this photo because this is another photo uh, within the Ohio Con halls of people actually being there for the convention. Tell me when you see it, and tell me how how much it hurts. On Zoom or YouTube? Take a look at the screen. It's on our on our on on the on the stream right now. On YouTube, Angel. Second. Let me go to YouTube again because I, I think I had that window open. Please bear with me. This computer is being a pain in the ass right now. Oh, uh, oh, that's why I was downloading something. My apologies. Give me a second. Let me uh, put a pause on this oh, torrent real quick. All right. Let me see what we got here. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Just a moment. It's loading. I, this, is, this is so priceless. Oh, I, no. <laughs> oh, no. Come on. <laughs> it is oh. not that bad yet. We do not deserve that shit. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it does because that's an actual photo from uh, Ohio Con. And that's people in the convention floor. And someone actually went ahead and photoshopped over the infamous dash con ball pit so okay I mean, to be fair though it is accurate so i need to i think i need to educate some of our viewers for those of okay struggler knows the ball pit struggler, oh he knows you you and yes knows. aaron cooper oh okay God. i don't know if you know the ball pit at all okay i'm going to explain to you guys ho 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 Okay, so that's an, okay. So listen, in 2013, was it in 2013? Uh, roughly yes, 2013. Okay, yeah, no, uh, uh yeah, uh, uh I, I, I believe that's when it happened. Shit. Okay, so it, it was a con uh, there was a convention. No, sorry, 2014. There was a convention oh, okay. that took place in Schaumburg, Illinois, which was called DashCon, and this was originally meant to be a convention celebrating the fandoms within Tumblr. It was a disaster. It was so disaster. Like everything else connected to Tumblr. What? What's that, Angel? Like everything like else everything connected, else to, connected Tumblr, to Tumblr. But it was Tumblr. a disaster. 
Yeah, no, it was a disaster. It was mismanaged. There was money lost. There was a uh, there was a musical band that was supposed to be there, but they weren't there because they weren't paid, so they didn't show. People were pissed off. It was a <laughs> monstrosity. And if you actually wish to read uh, more about this, here's an ancient article from ten years ago from uh, from The Verge, uh, and that's uh, Disaster Con: How a, How a Convention's Big Dream Became a Nightmare. Seventeen thousand dollars and a ball pit. Well, as in the this, internet historian also made a rather humorous video about it. I highly recommend it to everybody. Like, this is where the ball pit comes from. As in, like, the convention touted that it was going to have a big, hilariously big fun pit. Like, like one of those fun houses and ball pits included in there for fun. But this was the pitiful little thing that it had in the middle of the convention floor. And at the end of it, people couldn't even use it because somebody took a whiz in there. Like an idiot. That's the best part. Like, it wasn't just the insult. It was the humiliation of, yeah, and somebody pissed themselves over it. Not that they pissed By themselves the way, over it, they just I pissed in it. I love the fact that this event had a horrifying and even more messed up sequel in the form of the event on that con where the ball pit was basically too much pit, not enough ball, and a female streamer jumped in the pit and ended up injuring her spine and requiring surgery. Okay, because that was she a, basically went back first into the concrete. That's a different. Uh, that was a different convention altogether. That was like a. Uh, that was like a gamer uh, league expo or something. And this chick, she's like a Twitch Gamers. streamer. Let's see here. Uh, I, a streamer hurts back. Oh, injured at. Hang on, I found it. Injured. At TwitchCon, and that was at TwitchCon. Yeah, yeah. Twitch Street uh, who shattered her back. Yeah, uh, that yeah, was back this, in this 2022. These in general are bad news. But yeah, we have a combination of bad management here, and the fact yeah. that the place is getting slightly emptier means that people are noticing. Because when you let go of the volunteers who have been there for years and know the place inside out, you are essentially saying that you don't need experienced volunteers, and let's not lie to ourselves. Running a con is very very difficult business maintaining a con is difficult business and for volunteers that have been doing this for a very very very, very. long time and you're basically telling them eh, fuck off now like brother in christ like my brethren my 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 blood from my uh, blood of my blood the fuck yeah. Now, I beseech thee, O friend of my hardest times. What the shit? Now, we're not the only ones who covered this story. There's actually a bigger uh, news outlet that's covering this, which is, well, I, I say bigger because these guys are better known than the Ravens flock. But then again, these guys have been around a little bit longer, so I guess we can kind of give them that. Or whatever. <laughs> the Anime I News guess. Network covered this. Hey. Yes, these guys are good peoples. We like them. They're all right. I don't have a beef with them. Do you have a beef with them? If you do, uh, 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 well, I'm a vegetarian and I ain't fucking scared of them. Uh, they that went sounds ahead like and a gave... personal problem and a skill issue. Now, uh, let's see here. They went ahead and they also gave us an article uh, about this. Uh, and they uh, published it on uh, Friday the 19th. Uh, let's see. Volunteers and former senior staff boycott Ohio Con Convention. Let's see. Uh, and this one is a very uh, lengthy article that basically give you, uh, gives you folks the same uh, sort of... Uh, Whoa, shit! Seriously?! Okay. What? Uh, oh, never mind. My bad. Oh, I misread that. Jesus. Uh, yeah, attracting an estimated three, uh, 13,000 attendees in 2013 is without question one of the largest uh, co anime conventions, uh, larger anime conventions in Ohio as well, rivaled only by Colossal Con, whose latest report at attendee, uh, attendance of 17,374 people comes it from 2015. But longevity doesn't necessarily uh, mean all's well at Ohio Con. Uh, as over 91 volunteers, including former senior membership leaders wow. and year-round volunteers. So not just people working during the time, but actual year-rounders. Uh, let's see here. Are boycotting the event following the termination of Cody Markham, the convention's former con chair, who's been with the con since 2009, and Aaron, the former director of marketing. So yeah, those are the people who got shit canned. Um, it's worse than I thought. When you told me that they threw it away a few people, I thought it was a couple dozen, not almost a hundred of people that have worked Wait, how do you work year-round the con exactly? 
like I said, Angel, when it comes like when it comes to uh, organizing a convention, it's not just the three days. You've got to talk to the venue. You've got to talk to the hotels. You've got to negotiate with uh, talent agents for whatever guests that you want. You've got to set up your like. You've got to make sure your insurance is up to date. So you got to talk to your business insurance. You have to get set up with vendors. You have to get, like. There's all that shit, and it's not something that you can bang out in a weekend. That's shit that you got to do way in advance. So, so what yeah. if I just throw away all those senior workers and replace them with people that have no idea what they're doing? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Felt. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> wow. Go fucking figure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, when. Asked about her previous involvement, uh, OhioCon executive director Melissa Phelps claimed to have held various positions within the con since 2000, though she wouldn't become an owner, uh, let's see here, wow, uh, until 2011, and even then she wouldn't become sole owner until 2022. She told Anime News Network about her involvement with the con between 2011 and 2021. During this time, the partnership was split in half, where I focused on the show and uh, the former uh, uh, other owner, Alan Shaw, handled all the business compliance issues. Phelps stated her roles have included convention chairman, program director, co-senior director of relations, amongst others. Phelps told ANN that CESI was formed in December 2021, though it was not recognized as a legal existence until March of 2022. Uh, per Phelps, CESI was founded with the goal, uh, quote, with the goal of achieving nonprofit status. Our mission is to increase Asian cultural awareness while serving the communities and industry at our signature event, OhioCon, is a part of. Our current structure includes a board of directors and three event-oriented directors. Okay, so this is the lady who's at the head of CESI. This is the lady who's basically, uh, threw her proverbial dick around and got and fired the people who were running OhioCon for her. And Almost she must be delusional to think that she can run all this by herself. Oh, no, no, by herself. By herself and a bunch of new hires that came in with eager eyes and big dreams. Now, uh, I also, I actually also want to let you guys know something very important. We at the Ravens mm -hmm. Flock do pride ourselves in taking care of our business. We do our work. We try our damnedest to make sure we do everything above board. Jose, I am chopping my hand for you. Because when we get business done, we want to make sure that it gets done right the first time we around. We stand on business, ninja. Well, yes, of course. Business. We pride ourselves in doing our due... We, we pride ourselves in staying on top of our due diligence. And due diligence. as such, I must inform everyone, why is this camera tilting more than I wanted to? Hang on, I gotta fix that. I'll fix that in a minute. I have to let you guys know. It's the know. power of chopping hands, Wancho. It affects everyone. Yeah, your yeah, balance is shit, my man. I'm informing you guys all, uh, right now uh, that right as we announced tonight's episode, I also had us send. Uh, I also had us send out a request for a statement slash interview to both the CESI and Coven. Since nice. This is pretty Did short we get any response? So since it was pretty short notice. We didn't get a response from either of them. As a matter of fact, the, uh, as far as the uh, as far as getting a hold of anyone running OhioCon, the only way to send any email to them is to email them in their uh, FAQ page, and uh, their automated system says that they usually send a response within seven days. So we are never getting an answer. Likely not, especially considering like, that yeah. since about transparency, you see this, you see these. You can see through yeah. these. That's transparency. That's what we're. Yeah, no. Yeah, uh, no. I have eyes that can see through. Like, yeah, no. The information that we report on this channel is all public information. I mean, it's out there. Exactly, and uh, and since we're all about transparency in the actual freaking request for statement, I had made a point to specifically say, and I'm quoting exactly what uh what we had written down. I'm waiting for it to load. Blah blah blah. Come on. Come on. Any day now. Ten years from now. Okay, fuck you. It's not going to load from there. Okay, I'll just load it off of my phone. Okay. Uh, let's see here. 3,000 uh, years later. Okay. If at all possible, we would welcome a representative to join us for live for an interview on the program. The interview would be conducted remotely via Zoom, and we anticipated taking approximately 25 to 30 minutes. Right? Fair enough. Uh, it, uh, to provide full transparency, we are also sending a request for statement and or interview to the staff of OhioCon as well. While we understand this may be a point of contention, we believe a balanced perspective would serve the general public well in this manner. 
We let these guys know, hey, by the way, not only are we reaching out to you, we are reaching out to the other side of the aisle. We want you guys to know we're not trying to pick favorites. We want you guys both to be able to spe uh, speak your piece. If we do receive any... We're trying to be response, proper journalists and shit. If we do receive any sort of response in the future, we'll be happy to share it with you guys on this program. Either this program or the Ravens Falk, whichever fucking comes first. Uh, but truthfully... Uh, not that seems like a fairly reasonable request. Right? It's fair, right? Yeah, it's to the point. I get it. Right? Yeah, and Jose, you're, you, you can read the email under the sent folder. You can see it. You can see exactly what I fucking wrote out. No. Dude, you're fine. All right, man. I trust your ability. I trust your ability to, to network. Like it's it's literally just like yeah, like he's smeared. One hundred percent business above board. We ain't playing games with nobody. All right, that's a double no, negative. Absolutely not. Uh, Aaron Cooper. Oh God. Uh, she said, "I remember the one with the girl who got hurt. That was at TwitchCon. Ow, and that was in twenty twenty two. And Aaron Cooper also Ooh, said, Google, uh, "LOL. I had a business convention in Schaumburg once. They sucked for us too. Oof. Oof. Oof." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seems that we are running into an issue where these big cons essentially know they can get away with it, and unfortunately, they keep treating everybody like crap because they know they can get away with it. Rod, damn it! I hate to say it, but this—I hate to be that guy, but this may have always going to happen because these people have been working on this con year long. They are—they are workers that have been there for years. Long enough that they probably thought that they could negotiate something useful by virtue of the fact that they did a good job, well, you know, and they maintained that company running. Because let's be honest, the CEO only does two things. Spend money and complain about how the money is being spent. That's their damn job. Pretty Unfortunately, much. Unfortunately, that also yeah. means they get to decide who purses the strings and who gets to decide it. And honestly, I'm glad to see that the boycott is actually having some work done. But ultimately, this only highlights how kind of fucking unfair this whole voluntary system is. You can dedicate years of your life to the con, put in more work than some of the actual staff members, and the second you dare to ask for some compensation for your hard work, they toss you away like yesterday's garbage. Where is the justice, I ask? Justice in this economy, please. You in can't this even economy? get that shit on a payment plan. Oh my God, poor Bo Billingsley was there too. Man... Damn. He was at Ohio Con too. Yeah, the voice of Jet it's Black from uh, Cowboy Bebop. Crap. Man, man, he was cool. Damn, man. He's the man. Apparently, he was He's also the, man, the voice of Barrett man. from Final Fantasy VII. Oh, He's the that man was him too. Yeah. Don't believe me? Look Sweet. at his photo. See, he, he would. He sounded so much not like Jet. That's crazy. I mean, I'm happy to hear the man's got range. That's amazing. <laughs> Okay, that yeah, explains why oh, it was okay. <laughs> like one. It sounded like you dropped off for a sec. No, no, that's because I ducked down and I had to uh, fix my uh, tripod. I was wondering what the hell was up, why it was tilted, and I remember it's because the tripod, one tripod leg was like longer than the other. Um, You're funny. Shit. Okay, yeah, and another person uh, at Donny Doodles Friday night. Uh, they shared this. Uh, like my husband and uh, Ohio con Friday night, 11 PM. My husband and I have canceled our passes this year, but we kept our hotel so we could explore Columbus. We can still see the con from our room. It's sad and it sucks to see what it has become. Look at this view Dang. from within, from within the windows. Take a look at that. Normally, even if you've got like late night partying stuff going on, you'd imagine that there'd be some people, you know, boogieing out or whatever, or trying to like cause some shenanigans on the, uh, you know, in the outer concourse Something. of the convention. But look, it's a fucking ghost town. What the shit's going on? I think, Starscream. Don't, don't quote me on this, but I think that all those like people that they let go may have been good at, you know, arranging times and places for events. And where the guests are supposed to go, and without them around, everybody's just kind of going whatever and doing whatever, and nobody has any idea what the hell is going on. It's but that's just a theory, a game theory. <laughs> I wish. Like, t take a look at this. I actually want. I actually wanted to see what the exact, um, what the exact demands were from the folks at uh, Coven. 
uh, that were made for uh, for their compensation at uh, 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 for working with uh, OhioCon. Um, get a little of this in the uh, Anime News Network article. Uh, so I'm gonna I scroll down over here and I found it. Talks between Coven and CESI began as early as March 2013, no, 2023. Coven's demands, which are detailed here, yeah, and that's uh, uh, da, 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 uh, included but are not limited to fair compensation, the prohibition of CESI member uh, board members, quote, from receiving compensation over the average compensation value of staff leaders who do not sit on the board, the immediate adoption of a code of conduct that everyone would be beholden to, more transparency in budgetary matters, updated labor policies, and for CESI's, quote, outright purchase and ownership of OhioCon's brand materials, including logo and mascot. So basically, like, okay, you guys need to tell us where you're fucking spending our money, and if you're gonna be running us, you better either own us or don't. What the fuck? Let's see, it continues. So essentially, uh, they wanted more concrete contracts to maintain their work stability. Yeah. It kind of makes sense. They're basically just saying, yo, dog, treat us like we actually deserve to work here. That would, that would be nice, you know? But wait, there's more. Uh, there is a Google Drive with more detailed background information and documentation about why these demands were so important to Coven. A particular note, however, is the matter of finances. According to the document in the Google Drive, Phelps, that'd be uh, the, the lady, what's her fucking name? Uh... Melissa, Melissa Phelps. Blah, blah, blah. I can't believe I blanked on her name. Okay, uh, let's see. Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, according to the drive, Phelps intended to financially compensate her position, quote, $10 an hour from the beginning of the company at $15,300 and proposed salary at $22 an hour. This is a significant point of contention for reasons including but not limited to potentially causing a conflict of interest and questions of whether or not such an amount was fair and affordable. Markham alleged that the convention's financial issues were due to, quote, historical misuse and misappropriations of funds under Phelps leadership basically they're oh, saying this bitch oh. is scam uh, this bitch oh be scamming <laughs> now this is interesting so it wasn't just dirty dancing it was dirty money You're damn right apparently uh oh, it, that's how snap. that's how bad it is um this this is i was uh, gonna say angel so, Angel, don't disrespect one of my favorite movies, Dirty Dancing, by calling it Dirty Dancing, brah. It's just dirty. You know what? You're, you're right. Patrick Swayze deserves more than and that. And so does Jennifer Grey. Nobody puts baby in the corner. And so Jennifer Grey. <laughs> The article continues here. Uh, in the con owner's former, in the con's fo uh, uh, former official Discord server, Markham said, "Quote: She cited other cons as paying owners during her arguments for why she deserved a sixty thousand dollar a year salary. This is false, especially from a nonprofit side, which is what we supposedly are trying to be." Markham cited Anime Central, quote, you know, run by Midwest Animation Promotion Society, and. Uh, Otacon, Otacon, run by Otacorp, as examples where owners are not Otacon. paid uh, as per nonprofit co uh, conventions public tax filings. Tax filings on the IRS site for nonprofits that run these conventions, which are from 2015 to 2020 and uh, uh, 2016 to 2017, respectively, show that none of their leaders were paid during this period. Similarly, this is also oh. the case as per additional tax filings for these nonprofits available on ProPublica 2021 and 2022 for Autocorp and, 20, uh, and 2002 to 2014 for the Midwest Animation Promotion Society. So they're basically saying, oh no, like Melissa Phelps, the, the lady in charge of everything. She's like, oh no, I deserve to be uh, 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 paid 60 grand a year over here. Take a look at these other cons that are paying out. And folks are like, okay, receipts, survey says, eh, sorry, this bitch be capping. Wow. I wish I could say yeah. I'm disappointed, but the idea of the big boss taking trying to make the big profit for themselves while screwing over the workers is a tale as old as time, and one that we are once again forced to witness, much to our ever-growing disgust. Now get a load of this. This is what's hilarious. Apparently, uh, what's her face, Melissa Phelps? Apparently, she managed to get uh, gain access to every bit of social media and every bit of back access to the convention's infrastructure, except for the original official OhioCon Discord server. Huh. So she couldn't get a hold of that shit. Look, check it. Uh, the former wow. OhioCon Discord server uh, ser uh, has become something of a home base to the former senior leadership and their support uh, team and their supporters. While the Discord server used to be officially <laughs> associated with the con, 
Uh, Ning uh, clarified the server that the former staff members banned Phelps. They banned her ass. <laughs> wow. Ow. Reminds me of that one little article when the, when oh. one of the, when there was this like tech company that nearly went under because they tried to fire their senior technician before he like one day before his retirement was up. So he basically goes, "Okay, I'll leave. Good luck figuring out my coding deep shits." I remember that. Like, he set up, like, a coding system for their entire thing, and they had no clue how to fucking operate that. That's like an urban legend almost. He now, left this- no notes either. Like, that, that's almost like an urban legend at this point. Like, dig it. So if you guys actually want to read this, uh, the 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 manifesto, I guess, it's back, a lack of a better term. <laughs> Hang on. Where is it? Four, five... Okay, uh, yeah, so the little, uh, uh, oh, like, the official proclamation from the, from the folks at Coven, uh, went ahead and, look, come on, there, they went ahead and posted themselves their PDF document of their letter of resolution, uh, and, and the Coven organization into this shit. It's basically their Ooh. form of their decla- declaration of independence, a.k.a. their strike authorization that they put up on October 5th. So, yeah, this was what they basically served them. It's a 25-page long thing basically saying, this is what's wrong, this is what you fucking did, this is what we're doing about it, eat shit. So I mean, yeah, you took away the possibility of peaceful negotiation, so only violence is left now. You are the ones that turn off the rules... You don't get to complain about the free-for-all. I believe one of your favorite sayings has uh, applied very well here. In the uh, oh. f- in the words of Wonder Red in Wonderful 101. <laughs> Diplomacy fails again. Team, unite up! Roger! <laughs> Dear freaking yeah, no, lord. This is, this is honestly something that they should have expected to happen. When you close off all avenues of peaceful niggas down and telling them to go somewhere else, well, I mean, what do you expect? What did you think was going to happen? Again, it's the, oh my God, I like I didn't realize that voting for the tigers eating people's faces parties meant that the, that the tigers would be eating my face. Face? How could this be? And other glorious tales from management. What could this happen to me? I made my mistakes. mistakes. I keep making mistakes. Mistakes, mistakes. As I keep making mistakes. Somehow more mistakes. I can't go on Discord. Etc. Etc. This happen to me. Yeah, uh, Aaron Cooper. Yeah, no, uh, this is. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was kind of good to be redundant there. Go ahead, Eric yeah, Cooper. No, I was checking here. Aaron Cooper. Uh, yeah, seems true. No loyalty. And then I didn't know that. Lisa Boot. Dirt, dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Ha. Uh, and Struggler. Um, Melissa Phelps' Stand. D4C. Dirty Deeds Done Dirty dirt Deeds cheap. Done Dirt Cheap. God. My words and, and actions are unclouded, for they are the ones of just... God damn it! Valentine is such a good bad guy! God. Fucking best Jojo out there. Best God Jojo damn. Bill, anyway. <laughs> Apologies. I'm a big fan of Steel Ball Run, and I am still disappointed that it has not been properly adapted yet because Netflix is staffed by dumbasses. It's okay, Angel. It's not the end of the world. Just stupidity. I don't think you understand how good Valentine is. Valentine is Senator Armstrong if you really believe the shit he said. Oh my God, you're kidding me. Damn. That man is so American. There is a burn mark in the shape of the flag on his back. That's pretty American, dude. I'm not exaggerating. Joe Steel Ball Run gets fucking wild. Even by the standards of JoJo, Steel Ball Run is crazy. You're fucking kidding me. That is so cool. That's the part where Jesus shows up. Oh my god, you're right. And, like literal Jesus. Like, and for the record, yes, uh, like it is official. Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, Yeshua. Son, uh, Ye- Jesus, son of uh, uh, son of son Joseph. of Joseph, uh, uh, Joseph, uh, uh, Yeshua, is literally a JoJo. So he uh, is he's the, JoJo. the original JoJo of JoJo's the Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> Bro, Araki is a goddamn genius, and I love his work. But sometimes he leaves me scratching my head. But I apologize. 
We're getting off track here. Okay, point, point is, is the workers have unionized properly and they are taking a stand for the little guy. In this case, themselves. And even though even though we got to see some folks enjoying themselves at, uh, like you said, at OhioCon, and yeah, there's no avoiding it sometimes, you're going to have people who are going to, uh, to, uh, to go to these cons, uh, regardless of what the situation might be. It looks as if the impact that it t- that it had on OhioCon may have been bigger than we uh, than we th- uh, uh, originally thought. While we have some photos of people in packed uh, what do you call it in packed panel rooms and uh, being able to enjoy themselves as conventioneers should be allowed to, the fact of the matter is there are plenty more photos of uh, empty halls. And less than full halls, and depressingly large halls with few people in them, and a ball pit in wow. the middle of one of the halls. Why is that ball pit there? It's haunting my dreams. Yeah, Lancho, eventually it's a reminder to... that no matter how bad it gets, it can always get impossibly worse. I was gonna say, Juan, eventually you gotta learn when to get out of the ball pit. Jose, no, 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 no. He needs to stay on the ball about this. I have to. I, I have. I, I'm playing ball here, and we have to balls up. Okay, so uh, you gotta uh, you gotta hit this shit with your balls out, or we're never gonna get results. I'm sorry. That's just in the words of Anarchy Reigns. Sometimes you need a pair to get ahead in life. <laughs> Actually, yeah, couldn't have said it better. And uh, thankfully, there's one other um, bit of. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, there was actually one other bit of uh, of uh, people who are backing up uh, the the coven here. A tiny indie de- uh, uh, de- uh, developer called uh, Wraith Games, uh, who was uh, who was planning on uh, uh, supporting and sponsoring OhioCon, uh, they put out a statement of their own back on October seventh on Twitter as well. Uh, for the last couple of years, we have been the title sponsor for OhioCon, uh, for Ohio IGS. Uh, following the actions of the CESA, we are now officially boycotting the event. We stand in solidarity with Coven and the OhioCon senior leadership team's upcoming strike. Yay, so these guys are good guys. If they put out games that I know or care about, I think we should patronize them. Angel, patronize the shit out of these people. You're good at being patronized. Yeah! Yeah! How dare you not design AAA overpriced slop with graphics so sharp every other game looks exactly the same. That gets released on day one and requires a 60 gigabyte patch to work with a season pass and a three person pack of ass of DLC and also breaks every five seconds only to be outdone by some indie made by a bunch of dudes in a basement with 60 bucks a dream and a pair of balls. My God, the nerve of these people. That, it, 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 yeah, I know. How dare they? How dare they? Motherfucker. How fucking dare they? <laughs> um, and there's one other person that I want to give a proper fucking shout out to for helping me get as much details as possible on this. And uh, this is uh, someone, yes, uh, I, as I was scrolling through the talks, which tick, I was reminded of this situation on uh, TikTok thanks to a cosplayer who goes by the name of uh, It's Hack. Yes, I know. It's weird. Um, And uh, let me see here. I'm going to show their profile. And this person is a cosplayer. Go and follow their things. They're good peoples. And this person uh, gave me and gave the Raven's Flock basically the Rosetta Stone of the play-by-play of everything that happened leading up to the pro- uh, leading up to the boycott of OhioCon because this cosplayer them, uh, themselves actually went ahead and set up a handy dandy uh, 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 freaking uh, playlist for uh, for OhioCon. You see, it was no OhioCon, and they put up nine uh, posts from October to now uh, t- uh, chronicling the situation that happened there. Uh, so yeah, and there was someone who was at OhioCon who was running the out, uh, who was trying to run a booth, and they were looking to uh, get more information. And she's and she went ahead and said, you know, we're gonna boost this artist who decided to boycott it, even though they were out of the money for it. And she also went ahead and yeah, chronicled- she posted sev- she posted several TikTok clips uh, or, 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 during the course of this of this whole issue, and she's providing updates uh, left and right, and we appreciate that. 
Yep. So big shout out to It's Hack. Go to their TikTok and then go to their link tree and go patronize this person and give them uh, your support. Angel, patronize the hell out of this cosplayer. Quick, you're good at patronizing. How dare you be an incredible cosplayer with excellent standards, good work, and impressive set of morals instead of literally selling your soul for the nearest trend in a desperate attempt to obtain the attention your parents never gave you. You morally upstanding piece of shit. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. <laughs> Well done. That's a good one. That's a good one. Also, Angel. Also, also, it's proof that not everything in TikTok is all trash, right, Angel? I know. Surprisingly, every even this clock made in China can be right twice a day. Maybe it's right three times. Who knows? Maybe. I mean, I, hell, if it happens, I'll be surprised. But I'll be pleasantly surprised at least. Uh, and so, uh, uh, that being said, I think we can start wrapping ourselves up over here with our final thoughts. Um, let's see here. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, so, Angel, you first, and uh, we'll be uh, uh, going ahead, and uh, and we'll, uh, and like I said, we'll wrap you up, and we'll, um, and and we'll uh, uh, no. have you plug where you, what you're going to be doing this Saturday on Los Amigos Play. Shoot. Thank you. First off, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, my final thoughts. Honestly, this whole thing has only served to highlight how absolutely fucked up this entire voluntary system is. It ultimately boils down to the fact that you're taking a lot of people, forcing, asking them to do a lot of work, and giving them very little, if any, compensation. And hey, I get it. That's the merit of voluntary work. But when you have somebody that has been doing this kind of work for years and years, and they know the con more than you do, and it is basically thanks to them that the entire show even works in one piece, they are no longer volunteers. They are indentured servants. And you are treating them as such and cutting them loose the second they protest that their treatment might not be quite fair. Speaks only worse of you and better of them. I wish them the best. And even if this doesn't turn into anything at the end, I want it to be the spark that lights a fire and burns the whole thing down. That being said, on Saturday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I hope that you, my beloved listeners, will join us for another chapter of Los Amigos Play, where we play video games and I talk about video games and these two other choco box over here join me to also talk about video games and sometimes we even scream about video games. We make other noises related to video games, mostly noises that make the neighbors wonder what the hell we're actually doing with the video games. The point is, guys, we really like video games. So I hope that next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you'll be there with us for Los Amigos Play, the opening band to the rest of Joe's repertoire. Appreciate well, that. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. All right. And, Jose, and with that, I yeah. got to head out because I am exhausted. Yeah, go the fuck to sleep, Angel. I'm going to make sure you get yourself a nice... Scoop. Say, Angel, at least wait till I bounce so we can bounce simultaneously. Yeah, actually, All right, I'll yeah. hang in there for a minute longer. And Angel, uh, I'm going to give you a scoop of Guava Warfare when you get here Saturday <laughs> afternoon. That way you can thank be you. revitalized. <laughs> yeah. Much appreciated. All right, Jose, All right, so. your final thoughts and what can we expect from you tomorrow night on this week's edition of Wrestle Rewind? Well, I'll have to agree with Angel on this part because uh, unless the uh, because depending on the uh, on the convention and depending on the staff and how transparent they are with their with their contracts, you know, when it comes to volunteer work, you know, it's it's a very 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 dicey like 50-50 tac uh, business tactic. Um, and like I said, it all depends on it, it depends on the communication uh, uh, structure. Um, it depends on communication structure and it depends on the convention's reputation. If your reputation is good, and if you're transparent, then yeah, volunteer having volunteer staff that could work because you're because you're talking because you're 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 you're, you're, you're I want I want to say enlisting help from folks who love the con, who enjoy the con, and would like to help uh, and would like to help out. But if you have a very spotty reputation. Like Ohio Con or Anime Matsuri, how's that for another example? Yeah, those uh, fuckers over in Texas. Yeah, <laughs> then, Texas. sorry, buddy, your chances of your chances of getting volunteer work drastic go down. Yeah. Oh no, you're, you're not. You're gonna treat them. You are not doing Steiner math on my show. I swear to fucking God. Hell no. It's almost, <laughs> no. Hell no. It's almost midnight. I ain't got the energy for that shit. Good. Don't you uh, dare. I swear to Bob. Well played, what do we have for Wrestle Rewind tonight? Tomorrow yeah, night. you got me. You got me. All right. So for tomorrow night's edition of Wrestle Rewind, which is every Thursday night here at 10 p.m. Eastern, right on here on YouTube and Kick, where I review three of the most exciting professional wrestling programs in North America today. That is WWE's NXT, AEW Dynamite, and Impact. I mean, oh, sorry. TNA Impact. 
That's right. And for tomorrow night, um, uh, I'll be reviewing the main event show for AEW Dynamite, which features the WWE Hall of Famer, the rated R superstar, Adam Copeland, going one-on-one against Japanese wrestling legend, uh, Gra- uh, murder grandpa himself, Minoru Suzuki. Oh, you're going to you're gonna love to see how this guy looks. Would you like to see how he looks real quick, Angel, before I wrap us up? Um, just send him a picture for a minute here, but I'll give, I'll give Angel a little factoid, a fun fact about Minoru Suzuki. Um, he actually volunteered in doing a bit of a motion caption work, motion capture work for King for the Tekken games. That's him. That's how hard. Oh, is. damn. Hold on. I'm going to show, I'm going to show that, you this fucking that's guy. That's the dude that portrayed the King. Yes. Yes. Take, take a look. I at this am down nightmare. for this. Take a look at this man. Do you want hit to see this guy across from you in the ring? No. No. This guy will eat people. He shaves Wait his head second. like that Wait. on purpose. On freaking Wait purpose. A Wait a goddamn second. Do you send me a picture by messenger? No, take a look on the on on the, on oh. the channel and show. Look at this. Oh, guy. Right. this guy. Yes. Yeah, no. That, that, that head is that is a man that exists to intimidate. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no kidding, man. I summoned that fucker on the Grail War. That's a berserker. Jesus Christ. <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't want and- any of that. And of course, one of the hyped up, of that shit. And of course, one of the hyped up matches for this week's TNA Impact is the rematch from TNA's Hard to Kill as Trinity goes as Trinity goes one on one against Jordan Grace for the TNA Knockouts World Championship round two. Electric Boogaloo. So Trinity, so she here lost we the title go again. To, she lost the title to Jordan Grace. Now she's uh, challenging to try to get it back. So good luck to Trinity. We're all rooting for her. Yeah, and uh, that's it. Yeah, I guess that's it. that's that's it. That's pretty much it. I don't I don't have any I don't have any announcements to wrap up uh, January or any announcements for February at the moment. So yeah, me and Angel, we can go ahead and bounce. All right, good night, guys. I'll see y'all tomorrow, and uh, I'll see you Saturday, Angel. All right, there we go. I will right. see you guys later. It's been a pleasure and a joy. See you later. All right, Jose. indeed. Have a good night, folks. Thank you very much for having me. And please uh, be responsible of where you get your news from. And remember that at the end of the day, we're all human beings. Actually, you know what? For tonight, I'd like to provide a different quote that I think suits the subject matter. Okay. A professional, yep, a professional understands that they have signed a contract, and they have to, and and, and they're up, and they have to fulfill obligations. But more importantly, a professional knows their worth. Damn right. All right, Jose. We'll see you tomorrow night. All right. Have a good night, folks. All right. And that was Jose and Angel signing off. And uh, my final words on this, pretty straightforward. Um, you guys see where it all comes from. It was, it's just greed. It's just god dang uh, unadulterated, freaking prideful, boastful greed for the sake of, uh, just for the sake of it. And yeah, while the finances of running a convention uh, look murky, it's really straightforward uh, in terms of what f- the the folks who are looking to volunteer uh, and work at the uh, convention uh, at working on the uh, working on the ground floor of the convention are asking for. It's not that hard. It's not that much. They're asking for a chance to be able to actually provide an experience to folks. Why is my camera so crooked? Jesus Christ. Like, they're actually looking to start something important by making sure that people who work at these conventions are compensated in a way that's not just equitable, but transparent. And that's something that we at the Rams Flock, like I said, we're very proud about. We're, we're very, uh, we're, bu- we're boned up on transparency. We love transparency a lot because we believe that you should be 100% transparent about where you stand on shit, whether it's business, whether it's personal, be upfront with us, be upfront with me, especially for Christ's sake. I do not understand why anyone would freaking like it wouldn't be uh would have to try to be deceptive or would have to try to be fucking uh sneaky about shit it's not necessary but truthfully not not everyone subscribes to that belief whether it's in personal life or in business life um but i'm thankful to see that the folks over at coven are able to uh, work that out, and uh, we'll see how far their gumption takes them. And hopefully, this goes. This puts uh, the CESI, the governing body of OhioCon, on notice. Um, yeah, and we all circles back to tech. And you're right, struggler. 
Yeah, because you mentioned Tekken earlier, and yeah, Minoru Suzuki uh, did the mocap in Tekken. And yeah, and Lisa Boo followed her. Well done, Lisa Boo. See, that's what's up. Uh, yeah, and, <laughs> right. He, Minoru Suzuki does look feral there, Aaron Cooper. All right, um, and, we're hope, and we're hoping that you guys will continue to follow us here on uh, the Uncensored and Uncompromising Interview and Review Podcast of the, Bla- uh, the Raven's Flock, The Black Files, hosted by yours truly, Juan Arouse, as we delve into the darker side of nerd and pop culture. Request access as we go live every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, simulcasting on YouTube and Kick. Hit the subscribe and the follow button. Ring the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our uh, content. Become an inner flocker by hitting the join button, and until next time, continue to follow us on Facebook.com. Wow, where is it? Uh, Facebook.com slash Raven's Flock, Twitter.com slash Raven's Flock 13, Instagram.com slash The Raven's Flock Online, Kick.com slash The Raven's Flock, and of course, remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that tiny little notification bell right here on our flagship platform, YouTube.com slash The Raven's Flock, humble home of the Black Files. Los Amigos Play, Wrestle, Rewind, and The Raven's Flock. For Jose Casabona and Angel Mendez, I am Juan Arouse. This has been The Black Files. We are out.